Doug just got red in the face a little bit because we were talking about our predictions before the video, and he gets really aggravated sometimes. Uh, so we'll try to keep it tame. Maybe you'll give them a little preview of what you're like off camera one time. God, Ari. God. Times that by 500. Yeah. You can see that he's more red in the face because he got rid of the beard. He did. And your beard was red, so go figure. Okay, so here we are uh, outside or inside the indoor facility at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Um, Big Ten Championship game on Saturday. We'll be heading over to Indianapolis, but first we're going to give you our game picks. So just to let Doug's heart rate go down a little <laughs> bit, we'll start with you. Landis, what's up, man? Uh, I have Ohio State winning. 31 to 24. 31 points will be the most that Wisconsin has allowed this year. The defense has been very good, very good all year. No one scored on them. I don't think, the quarterback situation aside, I don't think Wisconsin has seen the type of players that Ohio State has on offense. And if Cardell Jones is in any way serviceable, doesn't turn the ball over a ton, they kind of, I don't know, maybe even reel things in a little bit and don't try to get too crazy with the play calls. If he can get the ball to those guys on the edge, I think Ohio State has a chance to score some points against Wisconsin's defense. On the other side, though, I don't know if I don't. No one stopped Melvin Gordon all year, and I don't think Ohio State's going to be the first team to figure it out. Minnesota had them figured out for like three and a half quarters, and then they finished the game with 150 rushing yards, and they mm -hmm. won by 10 points. So it's. I think Cardell Jones is going to be okay, and like I said in, the, in our outrageous predictions, I might be drinking the Kool Aid a little bit, but I think it, everyone here seems really high on him, and I know they have to seem really high on him, but I think he's going to be okay and good enough for Ohio State to win this game. Well, I thought it was crazy when they were really high on JT. Like, we remember the videos that we filmed, and I'm not saying that's nearly the same thing at all. But sometimes maybe they're, maybe it's 10% true or 50% true instead of completely bogus like I thought it was before. Doug, counter? Uh, I actually, like, agree with a lot, a lot of things Bill said. I thought Bill was making my argument here for a second. <laughs> I'm going to pick Wisconsin to win 34-24. Um, when you mentioned Melvin Gordon sort of being limited for a while against Minnesota and then going off in the fourth quarter, that would not be good news for Ohio State. You know, Ohio State, in the Indiana and Michigan games, I mean, we, everyone watched these games. They did not look great for three quarters in either of those games, and that was with J.T. Barrett, the offense got off to really quick starts in both those games and then stagnated. And and maybe it was there were some penalties in there. JT missed some open receivers. But if that happened with a guy that people view as a Heisman candidate, I don't know what's going to happen with a guy who's never started a game before. This is not really about Cardale Jones. This is about the situation for any team forced to play its third-string quarterback who's never made a start in your conference championship game. We saw what happened when JT Barrett got thrown into this, and he actually had two weeks to get ready. Cardell Jones has one week. And those teams, too. That was Navy, you know, which, which you yeah. know, is not, is not going to play for the Big Ten championship. Um, and then Virginia Tech had a great scheme, and, and JT Barrett wasn't ready for it. We remember now, JT Barrett's been unbelievable. JT Barrett was a four-star recruit who everybody – including me like I was sort of like I in the beginning saying well you can't expect JT Barrett to be great that's just because he was young I thought JT Barrett would be really good I didn't think it'd be this quick I'm zero percent shocked JT Barrett's a very good quarterback Cardale Jones is just a different situation he's more of an unknown so you couple the stagnating offense for three quarters the last two weeks with JT Barrett you couple a quarterback who's never made a start before and you add in a solid defense, Ohio State, this is basically the fourth decent defense, maybe the fifth if you throw in Minnesota. Is Minnesota's defense yeah, decent? Yeah, it's fair. Penn State, Virginia Tech, Michigan, and Minnesota. <clears throat> Ohio State, th those are the four decent defenses. This will be the fifth. Ohio State went nuts against Kent State. They went nuts against Cincinnati. Now, the outlier is Michigan State, which I forgot. Michigan State, very good defense. Ohio State played the best offensive game you could hope for. They turned it over a couple times with some weird stuff. That was the best this offense can be. And they haven't been that good offensively, as good, since then. Now, they piled up some yards against Minnesota, but they made some big mistakes. And then against Indiana and Michigan, it just wasn't there as much. So I think it's a lot to ask. No Noah Spence. No Braxton Miller. No JT Barrett. No Dontre Wilson. Wisconsin is a team that should have beaten LSU early in the year. Didn't. They had a a brain cramp against Northwestern. Nobody knows how they lost that game. You know, if anybody coming out of the West, you're going to, the Big Ten West, you're going to have trouble with their schedule because there's no great teams over there, you know. And so the West winner was going to have questions about the schedule. 
I think Wisconsin's pretty good, and I think I just think this is the third string quarterback, guys. And I just think it's an unfortunate situation for an Ohio State team that's had a really good year. I think this is too much to ask. I was the lucky winner of the dumbest reporter poll. And I was almost a landslide. I think maybe you gained some ground on me in the end. But I think it's I think because your mom started voting for me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> or I might have re I might or might not have gone private mode on Firefox and refreshed. Um and I think it's because people think I've been negative all year. And I get a lot of emails and things about, you know, to this day there's one commenter that says Braxton Miller on my basketball stories. <laughs> can't can't get it past that. And I think I'm gonna be ultra positive now for the first time, I think, all year. I think that we were both Bill too, pretty hard on the JT situation, and he proved us wrong. And I agree with everything you said about Cardale. He's not. You know what? I'm gonna interrupt you. Okay. JT no. proved us wrong after they lost a game, in part because yeah. they had an inexperienced quarterback who didn't play great. Yeah. And that's all it will take in this game is one game. So go ahead. Yeah. So maybe we weren't. Comp- not undefeated. Well, yeah. Well, it's not like. I mean, yes. He's great. Yes. The fact that he got thrown into a tough situation did have an effect on this team this yes. year. He's great though. Yes, all of that I agree with, but all the things that you had on your fingers of all the things they've lost, the fact that they overcame that Virginia Tech loss and ran the table in the Big Ten and now haven't lost a a Big Ten regular season game in three years, I just feel like there's too many, they've overcome too much, I guess, at this point for me, and I know I sound really, really positive, it's kind of weird, but I kind of, maybe this will be the first week I don't doubt them. And, you know, I'm prepared to be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. But, you know, I think Ohio State's offense, like I said in the Outrageous Predictions video yesterday, has a lot of pieces. I think that they can score. And we were all going to pick Ohio State if JT Barrett wasn't injured. And granted, that's a huge loss. That's not true. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa, (laughs) there. I was going to pick Wisconsin to lose anyway. But, ah, you just, like, threw me off my game. Anyway... I'm going to have faith in Ohio State. Stop with the angry comments. I think Ohio State's going to win 26. You know, i got to think about because Cardell can't throw a touchdown pass because of the outrageous. 24-21. Ohio State maybe gets a defensive touchdown. Your Jalen Marshall prediction comes through. I think Ohio State, just based on everything that happened last year, the weapons they have on offense, the fact that I'm not completely bought in on Wisconsin being a really good team, like a good enough team that would have beaten them with JT Barrett, uh, I'm just going to give Ohio State the benefit of the doubt for one week. So that's uh, 24-21 is my pick. Be sure to add yours in the comments. We always love hearing from you. Thanks so much for all your participation. For Doug Maurice and Bill Landis, I'm Ari Wasserman uh, inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. And be sure to stay tuned with us throughout the weekend as we go to Indianapolis for the game. And then, of course, provide you with the bowl information and their destination the following day. Thanks so much, and, and have a great day.